Thank you. My question is to the Chief Scientist. Um, Dr Finkel, I'm sure you'd know and agree that empirical evidence decides science, wouldn't you? Empirical evidence is important, Senator. So it decides the science? It, it decides science? Uh, I'd say that science is complex. Science, um, especially today in our, in our, the issues that we're tackling, many of which are decided through modelling and statistic approaches, uh, it's not always simple to say here is a definitive piece of evidence one way or the other. So on, on what basis do you believe that uh, the carbon dioxide from human activity affects climate and needs to be curtailed? Oh, I, I think the uh, principles that uh, lead to that, not your final conclusion, but to the effect on climate are quite clear. Um, you know, across all the countries of the planet, we've been burning fossil fuels at a rapid rate. It's uh, clear that by doing that, we're emitting ever increasing quantities of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The natural systems can't absorb that. So there's a clear hypothesis and then there's clear evidence. The thing that I find most compelling, Senator, is when you've got the combination of a hypothesis and evidence. So when it comes to carbon dioxide, it's clear what would be driving increases in carbon dioxide. Then you go out and measure it and carbon dioxide goes up every year. Last year, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere went up 3.05 parts per million, which is more than any other time. So the carbon dioxide is going up. Does that create warming? The theory that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere does trap heat, so ultraviolet light comes through the atmosphere without interruption or almost without interruption, hits the ground, warms the ground, and you get an infrared radiation back from the ground, which is then to some extent trapped by the carbon dioxide. That theory goes back to 1896. A Swiss physical chemist, Svent Arenas, uh, did the initial work on that. He subsequently got a Nobel Prize for other work. And he identified that at, back in 1896, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere for basic physical reasons will trap heat. So you've got the carbon dioxide, you've got the physics that says carbon dioxide will trap heat coming off the ground, being radiated from the surface and from the water as well. You've got the clear physics, so you've got the hypothesis. Do you have the evidence? Yes, the temperature's going up and up and up. I think it was just yesterday I saw that NASA declared that the last 12 months have yet again been the hottest on record. So in both cases, carbon dioxide going up and it trapping heat, you've got evidence and, and theory. And the second case, which is that that trapped heat will lead to an increase in temperature, you've got the theory and the evidence. So that's steps one and two. The third step is the impact. The temperature's going up, what will that do to climate? That's where it gets very, very difficult. Now you're into the realm of modelling. Um, on whose data do you rely on, for your, on your statement that the temperature is going up and up and up? Uh, you mentioned everybody's NASA? Everybody's senator, uh, NASA, uh, very reliable, because NASA has, over the years, taken the combination of thousands of terrestrial recording sites and their satellite recordings, and with great consistency, they're seeing the temperature going up. And then you've got the UK Bureau of Meteorology, the National Oceans and Atmospheric uh, um, Organization in America, you've got our Bureau, you've got pretty much every organization in the world. Pretty much every organization in the world? Well, every major scientific organization. Every the major world. scientific organization in the world. Has anyone audited, audited that data? Well, uh, you know, I've not been and how, involved how many in, I've not been databases involved in any of those there? processes, but at some point, A, you've got to have confidence in your colleagues, but the Bureau of Meteorology was attacked in Australia a few years ago and went through an extensive audit of its terrestrial records. I would question the use of the word extensive. So perhaps you could give me a comment that in order to justify cutting the human production of carbon dioxide, we would need to first of all show that temperatures are warming, they're warming unusually, and they'd have to continue warming. Is, and and that warming is ongoing. Would you agree? Uh, I absolutely. And I think okay. that we have shown that, Senator. Uh, I'm not asking whether or not it's shown. I'm just asking. This is the logic I want to get through first. The second thing, that assuming the temperatures are rising unusually and they're continuing to rise, 
The second thing that we would have to prove empirically is that the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere drives the, the temperature. I don't think you have to prove that. Uh, the sequence that I outlined already contains that, um, that level of thinking. Carbon dioxide has been going up measurably since the start well, of the industrial well, age. Well, we we'll get to that Temperatures in a Temperatures have been going up subsequent to that. So what you're saying is you're agreeing then to prove that human activity needs to be curtailed or the production of carbon dioxide from humans need to be curtailed. We first have to prove the temperature is rising unusually and is continuing to rise, we agree. The second thing we would have to prove is that the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere drives the temperature, which you just said. And then the third thing we would need to prove is that the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is determined by human production of carbon dioxide. Well, you've put three, I can't agree with you, Senator. Okay. You've put three consequential steps in there. I think it's two. Mm -hmm. First is that human activity is increasing the carbon, leading to an increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And the second is that as a result of that, through simple physics that was proven in the 1890s, you'll get a subsequent temperature rise. Okay. So I only so see it as two steps, Senator. All right, that's, that's two steps. The, thir the fourth step, or your third step, would be that the, the uh, warming is detrimental to the planet and to civilization. Exactly what the impact of global warming will be is determined, it, well, we've got models to try to predict what that will be, and that's difficult. There are a lot of models, and uh, it's not as easy to predict what will be the consequence of the warming as it is to say how fast a mass will move if you apply a certain force. Okay. But the models do predict significant climate change. Okay. So you're relying on the models for that last part? Absolutely. Absolutely relying on the models. Um, would you be able, taken on notice, to provide me with a summary of the logic you've just outlined? and the empirical evidence at each stage, or failing the empirical evidence, the models at each stage? I could certainly give it a try on notice. <laughs> Thank you very yeah, much. Senator I would appreciate Roberts. that. Okay. It, it doesn't you. have to be long. I just want to check the logic, and I just want to check I'm the data I'm with you, Senator. I prefer short. Thank like you. me, short and simple. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you.